Hi, this is Ken McCarthy, and we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the System Seminar, founded in 2002. Now our content is delivered behind the closed doors of the System Club, and today I'm reading chapters from the System Club letters. The 40-40-20 rule, and I'll be one of the nice things about um, having me read the book is you get a lot of sidebars that you don't get from the book. And this is a another hundred dollar chapter, or a thousand dollar chapter. If you don't know this, um, this will absolutely transform your life, um, and it will be worth a whole lot more than a thousand dollars to you. And I don't know anybody else in the internet world that teaches it. I don't know why not. It's very simple, as you will soon see. Ed Mayer, do you recognize the name? My guess is 999 out of 1,000 internet marketers don't. Now, let me update that. My guess is 999,999 out of 100,000 internet marketers don't because the market is much bigger than it was when I wrote this book. Ed was famous for three things. One, being a wickedly good direct marketer. Two, promoting quality direct marketing education Tire, tirelessly, he founded the first formal direct marketing program in the world at New York University. And three, railing against the phonies and frauds who dragged the industry's reputation down. Ed was, above all, a genius at formulating marketing principles and making them crystal clear. One of the biggest contributions he ever made to direct marketing was his 40-40-20 rule. The most important rule in direct marketing, and that applies to internet marketing, that applies to sales, that applies to anything you do in the world of persuasion. And if you get this wrong, you there's literally no hope for you. And if you get it right, it puts you in the game. Okay, the most important rule in direct marketing, the most dramatic and visible part of a direct marketing campaign, whether on the internet or offline, is the ad copy. Now, that's not the rule. Ad copy is extremely important. There's no doubt about that. All the things being equal, the prize goes to the person who writes the best ad. But the reality is, all other things are rarely equal. Let's take a look at a very simple example that will make this clear. Two copywriters. One writes a so-so ad, good enough. The other writes a brilliant ad. Two lists. One made up of proven, hyper-responsive buyers who've been primed to respond to the offer. The other is an undifferentiated list of opt-ins. Who is going to win? The reality is that the so-so letter to the hyper-responsive list is going to wipe the floor with the brilliant letter sent to the so-so list. Mayer broke it down this way. 40% of your success comes from having the right audience for your message. And I'd actually jack that up to 90%, but we'll go with him because he's a senior statesman. 40% comes from having the right offer for your audience. Okay, there we go. So now he's to 80% and we're pretty close to agreement. So the right audience for your message and the right offer for your audience. 20% comes from the creative. Richard Sears, the great grandfather of direct marketing, put it this way, and I'm paraphrasing, I can write an ad on a paper bag in crayon, but if it's the right offer for the right person at the right time, it will sell. So what's the message here? The ad copy doesn't matter? No, no, not at all. But a sales letter or website, no matter how brilliantly conceived, can't overcome the wrong offer to the wrong list. As the great Dick Benson used to say, no one spends enough time on their lists and offers. Now, I could go off for hours talking about this, but let me say this. Um, most people don't know what an offer really is. 
in, in the direct response context. So uh, I guess I'll do a little sidebar on this. The offer is not your product. The offer is the thing that gets the prospect to take the action you want them to take, which could be buying the product, but it may well be getting a trial sample, a free sample, or a free report, or a um, you know a money back guaranteed version of the product. You know, it may, in other words, it, it's it's the thing. It's the specific proposition. In fact, it would probably be better if instead of calling it an offer, we called it a proposition because offer kind of confuses people and makes you think it's the product itself. You know, if I say 50% um, off or I say, you know, $27 off, what's, more, what's a more powerful offer? Um, well, it depends, but probably the 50% off. So it's it's it could be the very same thing. It's just the, it could be just as simple as the language you use. Uh, it could be the difference between um, offering um, a money back guarantee, making that prominent, not making it prominent, uh, or as Ben Settled sometimes does, making it prominent that there is no guarantee. I love that. Uh, by the way, you can only get away with that with your customers. Don't try that with the general public. Um, you better, you best, you best refund the money of the general public unless you want FTC problems. But if somebody's in your circle and you've made it crystal clear what the deal is, uh, then you have a little bit more leeway. Another example of uh, offers is you could make the offer plain, or you could make the offer with um, a bonus. And you could try one offer, one bonus versus three bonuses. Lots of different ways to, to skin the cat. And that's the offer part. So the the 40% is make sure you're talking to the right people. And then two, make sure it's the right offer. You've tested a lot of different ways. Eugene, Eugene Schwartz said the best thing about this, which is don't ask me to buy, ask me to try. And the offer is really, the proposition is really, at the end of the day, the thing that gets people in the door has to be, is, it, let's put it this way, is best couched in terms of trying. Not committing, not getting married, you know, um, not taking the job offer, not, you know, buying the house, but looking at the house or going on a date or interviewing with some of the staff. Right, trying, trying before you buy. It's a lot easier to get people to try than to buy. So you, well, you very often want to shape your offers in the form of a try, as opposed to the big commitment. You can always get the big commitment later. Anyway, this has been um, readings from the System Club Letters book, a book you could actually own and study. Um, it's I'm I'm kind of, I, I'm paying a lot of attention to this book because so many people are telling me the huge impact it's had on its life. Ben Settle says he's written it, he's read it um, over 20 times. Um, um, Doberman Dan says he reads it every year. I didn't pay them to say this. In fact, I was kind of shocked. And then I went back and read it and I realized, wow, this thing's pretty good. So this is my public service. There are a lot of people out there struggling trying to get traction in the world and uh, having good advice makes a big difference and I packed a ton of good advice in here I would say every chapter is worth at least a hundred bucks and some of them are worth thousands um, so do your calculations see you next time